G'day Aspiring Engineers. In this video we're going to do number 6 of 16 basic tutorials. I'm going to show you some of the keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to remind you of the ones that we were doing last time and I'm going to show you some new tricks. Stick around. So are you getting the hang of this? Uh, if you go through all of those 16 uh, basic tutorials and do them a couple of times then you're going to be doing two things. One, you're going to be practicing and two, you're getting repetition on what you're practicing. That means that you're going to be learning a skill. Alrighty, so here we go. What we want to do is uh, start moving a little bit less with the mouse and there's a good right click uh, menu here and uh, let's begin our sketch using create sketch off that uh, little right click menu there. But uh, before we do that, let's turn off that grid. Uh, I like to work without the grid, and we've done a little bit of practice now and you know what I'm doing. I also like to have that origin turned on. So there's a little light bulb next to the origin. Let's just turn that on. And then uh, let's right click to start the sketch. There's sketch down there, and create sketch a little bit through there. Now believe me, it's a little bit quicker than going up here and clicking that button up on the top. So I'm gonna click on this uh, this plane ready to get started and hit the S key and use the line tool. The other thing you can do is hit the L key for alpha line. So uh, looking at our drawing here and you can download the 16 drawings in the link below. Uh, go ahead and do that and then you'll be able to follow along very easily. You can see the dimensions and the sizes of the shape that we're doing. So uh, I've got the line tool started and I'm going to start drawing uh, horizontal, vertical, Remember this uh, way to get the curve happening? You go back to the point you've just placed, click and drag, and you've got this curvy thing. Then I'm going to just uh, do another line. This time I'm going to go off horizontal on purpose. Then I'm going to do another curve by clicking and dragging, and back down to the start point. So uh, that's a pretty ugly sort of sketch, isn't it? So uh, we need to use some constraints to get it happening. Hit the S key to get the select tool. Uh, I'm going to get this one here, which is supposed to be vertical, but it's not. All right, notice uh, before we start, notice that the sketch is all blue. When we've got this fully constrained, dimensioned, and then nailed down with geometric constraints, then it's all going to turn black. Black is healthy and ready to go on to the next part, which is turning your sketch into a feature. You're getting the, uh, the hang of this lingo now, aren't you? So let's select that vertical line and in the sketch pa palette on the right hand side there we've got a constraints menu down there and there's the horizontal and vertical constraint that makes this line snap to vertical. Now I'm going to select that, vert that line at the top of the sketch click the same button which does both horizontal and vertical and now I'm going to select the curve hold down the shift key to select a second entity, that vertical line and we want this to have the tangential constraint there like the one above and there's the tangent constraint in the bottom of the palette so we've got nice smooth curves going around the curve into the straight lines and you can see that there's one missing here wherever there's a curve running into a straight line if it's not constrained it needs to be constrained select that top line hold down the shift key select the other one and put the tangent constraint on there now these things are not the same size They're, this one's a smaller one than that one so here's what we do I'm going to select that one Hold down the shift key and select the other one. Scroll down on the constraints palette. My screen's not quite big enough to hold them both on there. And we've got this equal constraint. Now both of these curves, the one at the top corner on either side, are both the same size. They're both the same size, but they're no particular size. That's why I have to now hit the D key to get the uh, dimension tool. And I'll put a dimension on one of those curves. And uh, the radius that we're looking for here is 20 type it in, press enter, and you notice that it made both curves the same radius because we have the equal constraint on there. Okay, now a couple more things. We want to make this thing so that it's uh, 100 wide, and we want to make it so that uh, it's about, what, how tall is this one? It's 90 tall. Click on the top line, click on the bottom line, press on the side, and there we have it. Now I'm going to click the S key and go for the select tool 
and I've shown you how to put the keys that you like on the sketch shortcuts menu there. Um, now I can actually grab this thing and I can actually move it around because it's not nailed down yet. So uh, let's, um, let's see what we can do here. I'm going to get another dimensional constraint using the D key. I'm going to click on that point of origin, then on the base of the part and put it over to the side there. And you can see from our drawing that that's supposed to be 30. I don't need to put the 70 from the base to the, uh, the center of those uh, arcs. Let me show you what happens when I do. We get this driven dimension, which is a 70. If you get the, uh, the dimension with the number in brackets, uh, select it and hit the delete key, get rid of that, we don't need it. I'm going to put one more dimension here between the point of origin and one side of the part. Uh, it's supposed to be 50. Uh, and now we've got our sketch, it's turned black and it's fully constrained. Okay, now, uh, up until now I would have been jumping out of the sketch and going straight to the push-pull command but now I'm going to actually do a little bit more sketching. I think you've learned enough about sketching so that we can begin to make our sketch just a little bit more complex. I'm going to hit the C key for the circle tool and on those points of origin I'm going to put a circle, uh, put another one on the other one. Uh, I don't care if they're the wrong size now because I want to constrain them. So I'm going to hit the S key and get the select tool, select one circle, shift select the other one, Scroll down and hit the equal constraint. Notice that those two circles are now equal in size. I'm going to use the D key to get the uh, dimension tool and put one uh, dimension on this circle and the, the diameter of these circles is 20. And now they're both the same size, they're in the right spot. And uh, notice that uh, the circles have a diameter of 20 while the radius on the outside there has a radius of 20. So a diameter is twice the radius. The next thing we're going to do is uh, use the line tool to make a slot. I'm going to put a horizontal line across here and drag a curve, then a horizontal line again. I'm going to use the, uh, the tracking lines. I'm going to mouse over the end of that other uh, line down below. And I can see that now that I've got two tracking lines and I've just placed that in the right spot drag and drag it around. Now you can see that this sketch has a tangential relationship between the arcs at the end of the slot and the two horizontal lines. Nicely constrained, but it could do with a couple of dimensional constraints. Go ahead and hit the D key. I'm going to put a, uh, a dimension between the center point and the, uh, and the center point of the arc at the end. And that, you can see, is supposed to be 20. And it should be 20 between the two arcs. Or I should say 40 between those two arcs. And then uh, you notice how the, the center line of the slot is not quite lined up with that point of origin. So I'm going to use the L key to start a line, put it across here. So I've drawn that line. I'm going to use the select tool to select that line. Right click and then context menu. We have normal construction. That turns it into a dotted line, which means it's not going to interfere with our extrusion or our um, uh, push-pull command. And the nice thing that we can do with construction line is that we can uh, take hold of those little vertexes of the slot and uh, make those coincidence with the line, like that. So it's ready to extrude now, but before we do, I want to show you another way of doing that slot in the middle here. Here's another one that I did uh, prepared earlier. How about that? Uh, what I want to do is show you a different way of making that slot in the part. So right click and go down to sketch and find slot and we'll start with overall slot there. And so we can uh, just go ahead and get the tracking line from the, uh, from the point of origin there. Uh, draw a, a line across and then when you move the mouse up we get the, uh, the slot. I'm going to make that purposely the wrong size. Then I'm going to get the uh, the dimension tool and put a dimension on the, the arc at the end of the slot which should be 10 and then uh, another one to make it so that it's uh, 20 across there on one side and 40 in total overall length and uh, there's, our, there's our part finished. This is just another way to um, 
to do the same thing. Notice how the slot is much quicker. Now we're going to go to the uh, extrude button and what we can do is go to uh, press pull and uh, mouse to use the mouse, the middle mouse button to get the isometric view. Uh, select the, uh, the part, give it a drag and type in the distance that it needs to extrude which is 60 and our part's finished. Okay, I hope you liked that. Go ahead and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.